When children acquire a language, they learn both the vocabulary of that language and also the grammar. In many ways, learning vocabulary and grammar seem like different tasks. However, it turns out to be the case that they're related. Children who are more advanced in vocabulary are also more advanced in grammar. And the question that we wanted to address is why. There are a few possibilities. One possibility is that something internal to the child causes vocabulary and grammar to develop on the same timetable. Another possibility is that there are dependencies in the process of language development itself. It could be that you need a certain vocabulary to start learning grammar, and vocabulary provides the foundation for grammar. It could also be that grammar helps children learn vocabulary. A final possibility is that it's neither of these things or none of these things, but rather that there's some third external factor that drives both vocabulary development and grammatical development. So what we set out to do in our lab is use data that we have from an ongoing longitudinal study of bilingual Spanish-English children in South Florida to address these questions. I collaborated with Jamie Quinn and David G. Gare here at Florida Atlantic University. We have data on a sample of Spanish-English bilingual children who have been exposed to both languages from birth. We have measured their vocabulary and their level of grammatical development at the ages of two and a half, three, three and a half, and four. And these are the data that we used. The fact that the children were acquiring two languages allows us to ask the, the question of whether vocabulary and grammar are related only within a single language or if they're related across all languages a child is acquiring. If it's something internal that paces language development, then it shouldn't matter if it's English or Spanish. Everything should be related to everything. On the other hand, if it's dependencies within a language of vocabulary and grammar or vice versa, then the relations should be language specific and one should predict the other. That is, a child's level of grammar should predict his future growth in vocabulary or vice versa. What we found in our data was none of the above. We found that vocabulary and grammar were indeed strongly related. And in our longitudinal data, we could even see that the rate of growth over this year and a half period in grammar and vocabulary were strongly related, but only within each language rate of growth in English and rate of growth in Spanish were not related to each other once you took account of how much English and Spanish the children heard. So now the question is, what explains these findings? It's not something internal to the child, or the relations wouldn't be language specific. It's not dependencies of vocabulary on grammar, or grammar on vocabulary, or the growth models would have shown us that. So there must be some third variable that affects both vocabulary and grammar, but operates separately for each language. And we suggest that the place to look for such an explanation is in properties of children's input, or their language exposure. That is, we suggest there's something about differences among the children in the quality of the English they hear that make some children acquire both vocabulary and grammar more rapidly in English, and other children develop more slowly. But whatever this is, it affects only English, not Spanish, and vice versa. There are differences in the quality of the Spanish children here that affect their development of both vocabulary and grammar in Spanish and have no consequence for the children's acquisition of English. And it's important to remember that it's not just how much they hear, because we measured that as well as we could and handled it statistically. So these relations that we're seeing are apart from the influence of quantity of English and Spanish exposure. So what we think we have found is more evidence consistent with a lot of theorizing and empirical work of late that input matters, that the quality of children's language exposure matters. And finally, sort of as a, a takeaway both for researchers and clinicians, it, it may seem that language development is magical, that children just take care of it on their own. 
but in fact that appearance depends upon children experiencing a rich environment. And so for the future, for both research and practice, I think it's going to be important to pay attention to properties of children's language exposure. And finally, I want to say that everything I have said here about the questions, the findings, the implications is a gross oversimplification, and so I do hope you will read the paper. Thank you. All right. First of all, it was too long. And